Welcome to the 6th episode of 1 Minute Games. I am back! Today we're tackling beloved hypercasual classic Flappy Bird. We'll learn how to make signature movement, spawning pipes, collisions, flappy wings and tracking score. Before we begin, a huge thanks for the love and encouragement. It's your amazing support that motivates me to create more videos. I truly appreciate all your kind words. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're also enjoying the video. And stick around till the end, there's an awesome bonus project waiting for you. Let's begin! Let's use a cube of 20x20 20 20 to create the floor. Another cube of default size can represent the bird, with a smaller one in front for the beak. Create an empty object as a pivot point and place a flat cube as a child to make a wing. Duplicate and mirror it on the opposite side. Finally, create two eyes. Now, for the pipe. Let's scale down a cube by about 30 units or so and then add another cube on top for the border. Add another cube with a black unlit shader to create a hole. Drag and drop the pipe into the prefabs folder to create a prefab. Now duplicate it in the scene and rotate it, leaving a gap for the bird. Place both pipes in a new game object named Pipe Gate and create another prefab from it. Create an empty object and call it game. Create a new script and attach it. Now we can start coding. The first step is to code the iconic falling and flapping movement. The bird moves up and down at a certain speed. To make it fall, we'll adjust the speed in the negative direction while using the gravity variable to control how fast. To fly upwards, we'll use the space key. When it gets pressed, set the vertical speed value to zero to stop falling and then increase it to propel the bird upwards. Now that we have the changing speed, let's use it to update the bird's position. The up vector will point downwards when speed is negative. We can simply drag and drop the bird to link it. When we launch the game, the bird moves in recognizable flappy bird manner, smoothly gliding down and popping right back up as we tap that space key. In the second step, let's create some new pipe gates. To do it in intervals of every 2 seconds, Let's set up a countdown variable and decrement it with each frame. When it reaches zero, reset it back to two seconds. Now we can create a new pipe instance from a prefab. To organize, let's group all newly created pipes under a new game object, which we will create at the start. Also, parent this pipe's holder under the object that holds this script. For easy tracking, we can assign a numeric name to each pipe. Increment the count each time using the plus plus operator. Later we'll count how many have we passed. For a start, position the new pipe to the right and off screen. For vertical offset, use linear interpolation, lerp, which returns a value between 4 and 9, determined by a random value. Lastly, move the pipes gradually over time with each frame. Shifting them backward will create the illusion that the bird is moving forward. Remember to link the pipes gate prefab. We have the pipes, but we still need to handle collisions. First, we need to prepare colliders. Inside the bird prefab, remove colliders from all its children. Then, 
add a box collider only to the top parent. Make sure the is trigger toggle is on. Do the same for singular pipe prefab. Adjust the size of the box collider to roughly match the shape of the pipe. Another requirement is rigid body component. Disable gravity and enable is kinematic. A specific on trigger enter method is called whenever the bird enters the collision volume of this game object or any of its children. That's why it's crucial that all environment objects are parented as children, except for the bird itself. On collision, we can reset the game, or rather, start it again. At this point, also destroy the pipes, reset the variables, and reset the bird's position. The game will now reset if the bird comes into contact with the ground or the pipes. Birds usually flap their wings, right? First, let's rotate the whole bird going up and down. The inverse slurp function squeezes a range of numbers into a range from 0 to 1. In this case, when vertical speed is minus 10, it is mapped to 0. When it reaches a positive 10, it is mapped to 1. We then use the standard lerp to change the 0 to 1 range we got into minus 30 to 30 range we need for adjusting the bird's angle. Then we simply rotate the bird around the world's forward vector. Flap speed can be faster when going up than going down. For flapping movement, we can sample sign function with time. This will rotate wings up and down in the waving motion. Update the local rotation for both the left and the right wings. This ensures that the wings move along with the body's rotation. You can see the bird working much harder when it's going up, just like in the real world. And now the best part of the game, beating the high score. If you found this video helpful so far, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Create a text element. And attach it to the top of the screen. Create a variable to hold the reference to the text object. Next, import the required UI library for the text type. Create a new variable to keep track of the current score. First, let's ensure the score will be reset at the start of the game. Now let's loop through all transforms inside the pipes holder to get each pipe. The bird is at zero position along the x-axis. If the x position of the current pipe is less than zero, then it has passed. Next, we can extract the number of the pipe from its name using the parse function. If the number is greater than the current score value, we should update the score. Remember to display the updated score on the screen. Here we can also check if a pipe has gone further to the left and is off screen. If that's the case, we can destroy it since we no longer need it. Link the text object and give the final game a try. We are done! To capture that authentic vibe from the original game, let's narrow down the camera's field of view and recreate background elements. For an extra mile effort, we can add many different backgrounds and have our Flappy Bird travel the world. Feel free to test out the project on the each I.O linked in the description and download the code and project for free.
this new knowledge opens the door to creating many other games. Just like this promised bonus project featuring a cute flappy turtle. You can find this and many other projects on my Patreon page linked below. A big shout out to all these incredible people who have supported me so far. Your support means a lot. It's incredibly fulfilling to know that these videos are helpful to you. If you're enjoying this content and want to see more, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. It helps boost the algorithm and it's a great way to stay updated with my latest videos. Thank you and see ya in the next one.